Hello guys, so a while back I made a video called the top five scuba locations around the Philippines and most of you loved it. It went a little bit viral and got a lot of views, but a lot of people were commenting like, oh, you forgot this place. Oh, what about Bohol? What about this place? And some people are even like, oh, you forgot this and this and this and this and this and this. I'm like, I... I know that, but this is a top 5 video, not a top 1000 video. So after so many comments and debates about locations, as always happens when you do a video like this, I thought, you know what, I gotta do a part 2. I'm in the Philippines, I've dove all over the Philippines. Let's make it happen. So here's part 2 of 5 of the best scuba locations in the Philippines. Hmm? Critter Hunter. Alright, before we get started, uh, just so there's no controversy, I'm not saying these are the five best locations. They're all great. And I also want to point out that there's a lot more. And I should say that in part one of this video, I covered Anilau, Malapasqua, Dowin, Lobol, and... Tubataha. So if you don't hear those in part two, that's because I already covered them in part one. So don't get offended. I love those places as well. <laughs> so that's being said, let's get going with number five. Number five. So for number five, I'm going to say Porta Galera. Now, Porta Galera is near Anilau, and a lot of times, for underwater photographers and videographers, especially expats that go there just for that, you have people in the Hanalao Club or the Porta Galera Club, they're like, no, this place is better, no, this place is better. But they're both super popular for macro or muck diving, tons of rare species. But since I already mentioned Hanalao, I gotta mention Porta Galera, which is just as awesome. Now, to get to Porta Galera, you're gonna have to start in Manila and drive or take a bus or whatever all the way south to the coast to the Batangas Pier. From the pier, you can take the ferry across to Mindoro, which is where Porto Galera is. The drive will take you about four and a half hours from Manila and the ferry stops running at 4.30 p.m. So you should probably plan for that. And from the Batangas Pier, you'll get a ferry to the Mueller Pier, if I pronounce that right. And from there, you can get a tricycle or maybe your dive center will pick you up. There's a lot of dive resorts there to choose from. In fact, I wouldn't even worry about driving and all that stuff. If you book your dive resort ahead of time, almost all of them will arrange to pick you up at the airport in Manila and bring you all the way back. So it's not a huge hassle. And by the way, while you're either there or or in Anilau, make sure to ask to go to Verde Island. Number four. So next up on the list is Leyte. And Leyte is pretty huge island, so I'm going to be more specific and say Sagad Bay. Sa Sagad. Sagad. I don't know. It's Sagad Bay in the south of Lady, and it's an amazing dive location. And it is definitely the least visited destination on this list. And I'm not sure why. It's one of the greatest spots to find macro critters as well as whale sharks. It's a huge whale shark area. And, but right now it's really unvisited compared to all the other famous locations on the list. Um, but I don't think it's going to last for long. I think word's going to get out and Lady's going to be another really popular dive destination. To get to Sagad Bay, you'll need to fly to any of the main cities in Southern Lady, such as Ormoc or Masin or Bato. From there, if you've booked ahead, uh, your dive resort will probably pick you up. And once you're diving, you have endless options for macro critters and reef fish and reef as well as the big uh, whale shark tours and you're gonna have these dive sites to yourself so it is definitely an awesome trip if you want to get off the beaten path so definitely check out lady 
Number three. So number three is Bohol. So you've probably heard of the famous Chocolate Hills, and it's also home home to the famous little Tarsiers. But what most divers have discovered is Bohol is also home to a ton of awesome dive sites. The fastest way to get to Bohol is, of course, the direct flights from Manila or Cebu to Tagbilaran City. From there, most divers or beach lovers head straight to Panglao Island, where most of the dive operators are. And all dive operators in Panglao have a huge variety in dive sites where you can see all the famous macro and coral and things that Cebu and the Visayas is famous for, as well as whale sharks if you're lucky. So just like I mentioned Verde Island for Puerto Galera, if you're in Bohol, you have to ask to dive at Balakasag Island. So Balakasag Island, uh, if I'm saying it right, is one that in part one of this video, everyone was like, ah, oh, you forgot to mention this. So I have to mention it now. And it's a tiny, tiny island. And the easiest to get to is from Panglao Island. But you could probably get there from Southern Cebu or maybe even Dumaguete. But the closest is Panglao. And it is one of the best dive locations and least visited, least human impact in the whole country. So if you're in Bohol for diving, you have to, have to, have to go there as well. Number two. So number two is Caron. And people went crazy that I didn't mention Caron in my last video, but I thought it was a little too obvious. So now let's talk about Caron. Corone is located in a super remote area of northern Palawan. It's not even part of the Palawan island, the main island. It's north of there in a huge scattering of islands. And each one of these places has insane diving. But Corone Bay, if you didn't know, has an entire Japanese fleet that was sunk there during World War II, as well as some American planes and bombers. So. The wreck diving in Crone is amazing. Only paralleled by Truck Lagoon in Micronesia. You could you could wreck dive every day here for a year and still want more. It's such an amazing dive site for wrecks. One of the wrecks I dove in that I remember the most was an upside down oil tanker. And it was completely upside down and the oil floated to the top, which was you know, previously the floor. So while you're diving, you can see pools of shimmering oil above your head. It was kind of cool and it was really, it was pretty eerie because this, I mean, just one room in this huge tanker was the size of a, a, a whole house or something. So it's really awesome diving and there's tons of it. You got to go to Crone Bay and check out wreck diving. But you guys, if you're in Crone and you want one of the strangest, most craziest dives ever, have your dive shop take you to Barracuda Lake. So, and it's also one of the most beautiful out of water scenes you're ever gonna see. But once you get to Barracuda Lake, it is the strangest dive I've ever done. It's basically a thermal heated lake. So when you dive in it, they tell you, you can't wear a wetsuit because you'll overheat. And it's for good reason. I'm not sure how hot it gets. I'll put it on the screen. But when you dive in it, it's like diving in a really hot bath. And you're like, is this safe? Is this? But you see your dive master or guide doing it, and you're like, okay, I guess if he could do it. Uh, but otherwise, it's kind of scary. It's so hot. And you dive down to the bottom, and it's full of this crazy silt that you can actually sink in. <laughs> and then there's all the formations of the sandstone around or whatever kind of rock towers. It, it, it's a crazy, crazy sight. So once you get 
Tired of all the wreck diving in Corone? Make sure to head up Barracuda Lake. Number one. So number one on my list today for the top dive locations in the Philippines is Romblon. This isn't just a top location in the Philippines. It's actually top of my own scuba diver wish list. It is one of the coolest areas you can dive in the whole country and the whole world. So I'm in all these underwater photographer, underwater videographer forums, and all the sweet photos and videos are coming from Romblon these days. From amazing night dives and black water dives to rhinopias and frogfish and everything you could think of, all the exotic species are here around Romblon. And just so you know, the Melaby, the Coleman Melaby nudibranch that is like the number one nudibranch on my list. It is now seen regularly on a dive site in Romblon. And all my friends are telling me, oh, you got to come here. We see it every day. And it's one of the most rare nudibranchs in the world. That is the number one nudibranch on my list. So I definitely have to get to Romblon. There's a whole host of underwater photographers and videographers now based in Romblon just because it's so awesome. It's like the new Analau, but less visited. Um, so you definitely need to go there if you want awesome diving and critter hunting like I do. And to get to Romblon, you should probably just fly into Tablas Island, which is a bigger island next to it. Or maybe even Boracay. And then you could take a ferry over to, uh, to, over to Romblon. So, yeah, I highly, highly recommend Romblon, as well as all the other locations on this list. And on part one. And on part three, probably. So there you have it, guys. Let me know what ones I missed. Oh, man, I shouldn't say that. Let me know what ones you've dove on this list. And let me know if they're as good as I say. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. It helps me so much. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye. Yeah. Subscribe!